Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. Now, in today's video, guys, I'm going to be doing a ranking of my 10 favorite movies of all time. Now, before we get started, make sure you check out the other content that's going to be dropping right after this. My new review for the new Ghostbusters movie, as well as the Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 movie. Make sure you go check those out if you haven't. I really do apologize for the delay in these videos. I've been trying to get caught back up. I got sick just before break, so that didn't really help. Uh, but uh, everything should be coming out today, so make sure you guys check out all that content and hopefully i can stay caught up for the month of april because it's going to be just as packed with movies as march was so make sure you're staying tuned for the reviews that month otherwise um before we get started with this list just kind of a little discussion beforehand uh this is honestly even though this is my top 10 favorite movies of all time this isn't really a ranking uh this isn't in really part any particular order other than maybe the first two or three are definitely like up there like my absolute favorite favorite movie of all time my second favorite movie of all time but the other ones uh, on this list are honestly interchangeable uh, when I was coming up with this list I came up with like a huge pool of movies uh, that I've watched numerous times over my lifetime and that I really really enjoy and uh, I kind of downsized it and you know kept uh, you know, uh, shrinking it down until I got down to my last 10. And it was very hard to single out certain movies for this list. But honestly, this this list could could change uh, many times throughout the day for me. Uh, there, it, it was really, really unfortunate to have to single out certain movies on here. But if you do want to see uh, all, of, uh, all of the movies that I really enjoy uh, from various different genres, if you have the app Letterbox, you can check out uh, some of my lists for certain genres, uh, my favorite movies from the horror genre, uh, adventure movies, action films, comic book films, all that kind of stuff. I still need to work on updating some of them because I haven't really added a whole lot of movies on them yet. Uh, but if, if you guys are curious about that, you can download the app Letterbox for free and you guys can go on my profile and check out those lists for yourself. Uh, but, uh, yeah, honestly, this list could change uh, many times throughout the day. It isn't in really per any particular order. And keep in mind that this is just my list of favorite movies. Uh, these movies on here are not, I recognize, are not, you know, top-tier cinema. These are not the greatest movies of all time. That's not what we're doing here. Uh, I, I think that lists like that are kind of boring because they're pretty objective Everybody usually has kind of the same list if they have, uh, you know, a lot of experience in uh, in movies and have watched, you know, a wide variety of movies. But I think it's more fun when people do their uh, their list of their favorite movies of all time because everybody kind of uh, ranks their movies, rates their movies differently. How I rate my movies usually is how much I enjoy them, how rewatchable they are. And so that's what most of these movies are here on this list. And most of them are movies that I grew up with and that hold a special place in my heart for that reason. Uh, and so there's only maybe a few on here that are movies uh, that m some would probably consider classics or whatever. Uh, so you might be surprised by this lesson. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're surprised by any of the uh, placements on here, any movies that weren't on here. Let me know in the comment section down below afterwards. Otherwise, that's pretty much all I got. Let's get started. Number 10, starting off with a little bit more of a recent film. I, I don't even know why I'm doing the whole 10 thing because this isn't really in any particular order. But uh, coming from just a couple years ago, Spider-Man No Way Home. And this is a movie that is just a fan service done right. I am a huge fan of the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans. And that's what I really came here for and was anticipating was to see Tobey Maguire Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland all on screen, but in particular seeing Tobey Maguire back on the big screen as Spider-Man, and they did just that in this movie, and although we kind of all saw it coming when they were introducing the, like when they showed the villains in the trailer, it's like obviously you're going to bring in the Spider-Man as well. They didn't spoil anything, they didn't reveal, they didn't say it outright that they were going to be in there, and so when it did happen on screen, it was a huge deal, and I honestly enjoyed this theater experience even more than Avengers Endgame. Uh, while Avengers Endgame was a huge buildup and it was really awesome, it was something that was just unprecedented. As somebody who has liked the Spider-Man movies, in particular the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans, since even before I really got into the MCU, this was just a huge deal and a huge fan service. And I think that even as far as what they did with with Tom Holland, I think they really paid off his character really well and really got his character developed 
uh, and out of that kind of Iron Spider stage. And I'm really excited to what they're going to continue doing with him in the future. And I think that they really do good justice to Andrew Garfield as well. Uh, it's really just an all-around great fan service that uh, just helped a lot of different things that had been needed in in the Spider-Man, uh, for, for all the Spider-Man fans for a while. Many people uh, were wanting that Spider-Man 4 sequel. It never came, unfortunately. The Amazing Spider-Man 3 that they very much needed after the kind of disappointment that The Amazing Spider-Man 2 was. And this movie, I think, sort of just put it all together into this one amazing fan service, and it just worked really, really well. And uh, I haven't actually rewatched the movie since I watched it in theaters. I'm not really someone who rewatches movies as much as I used to, especially if, uh, especially recent movies. Um, so yeah, you might find it surprising that I ha actually haven't rewatched the movie since. But uh, I can tell you, it was an amazing first time experience, and uh, I think it'll still be uh, just as good uh, if I watched it a second or third time. So yeah, Spider-Man No Way Home holds a special place in my heart, and it definitely is a well-earned placement here. At number nine, probably the only one on this list that many people could consider a classic, Back to the Future. Uh, now, Back to the Future, I didn't see this super earlier on when I was like a little kid, but about maybe five, six, seven years ago, uh, I saw it on TV because this movie, if you have cable, uh, which I, I don't really watch TV as often, but it, I just know that it was always on cable, uh, the uh, Back to the Future trilogy. I had happened to watch it, and I absolutely loved the Back to the Future trilogy. Uh, if I was able to just include entire trilogies on this list, we'd, we'd have a lot on here. Uh, and the Back to the Future uh, trilogy and just the back to, first Back to the Future in general is just a really, really great film. And I know this is kind of an overused term, but it's just a timeless movie because this is a, a movie that you can legitimately uh, recreate for each generation because it's about... Uh, a kid who goes back uh, in time and sees how his parents were raised and has tr trouble kind of coping with how things used to be in past uh, decades and generations. And he kind of looks like the stupid one for like picking out all these certain things. Uh, and this is a, a movie that, um, uh, if you've watched Sean Chandler, has said that they need a legacy sequel for, and I definitely agree. I think there should be a legacy sequel where we have some kind of, like, whether it's, like, a Gen Z or a Gen Alpha kid go back in time to their, like, millennial or Gen X parents and just look completely stupid uh, with, you know, picking on some of the things that they used to do and, the, and, you know, all that kind of different stuff, which they sort of did with Totally Killer, which is why many have called it like a Back to the Future type slasher movie. But yeah, I mean, just beyond all of that, Back to the Future, just an extremely enjoyable uh, adventure film, two very, very likable main leads. Uh, and just, you know, people love time travel films. I like time travel films. It may not be the most logical uh, time travel film and obviously has been picked apart since then. And time travel in movies have has definitely developed a lot more and gotten uh, a, a lot more closer to accurate. Still not very close to what is probably accurate, but uh, still Back to the Future, just an instant classic. Uh, that uh, it, it just will last, it will just stand the test of time, honestly. And I just love all the different side characters in here, and uh, just I uh, love all the different fun uh, and the, uh, in particular in Back to the Future 2, I know we're not talking about Back to the Future 2, but the predictions that they make for that movie are absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but uh, yeah, here, just in the first Back to the Future movie, going back to 1955, there's already a lot of fun to be had with it. So I, I really love Back to the Future, and I think it just uh, says everything that this is a movie that really anybody can enjoy, because I didn't watch this movie super earlier on. Like I said, I watched this maybe six or seven years ago, uh, and um, it, it was a movie that just absolutely instantly uh, I just really, really loved. So it, it's something that really any generation can uh, watch and just instantly fall in love with. At number eight, another more recent one on here with Spider-Man No Way Home being my favorite movie of 2021. This was my favorite movie of 2022. That, of course, being Top Gun Maverick. And much like with Back to the Future, I think this says a lot about this movie that I can watch a movie... Uh, that uh, f from a franchise that I'm wasn't actually familiar with. Uh, when this movie came out two uh, almost two years ago now, uh, I had not seen the first uh, Top Gun before watching it, 
and uh, wasn't familiar with the franchise at all. But I, after watching it, I was like, this is one of the most incredible theatrical experiences that I have ever watched and instantly just shot up uh, into some of the most enjoyable movies that I've ever seen. And so, yeah, I think that just already says enough about it. This is a movie that you can just tune on and after after watching it, you're just going to feel so uplifted because it's just one of those feel good movies top or you know Tom Cruise is just one of those actors you can just put on screen he's gonna do the job and just have that magic and he's just such a talented guy uh and such a charismatic guy in this movie I feel like and uh you got a lot of other uh great likable actors here on screen as well and it's just a, it's just a feel-good movie and uh, really just brings you back to the good old days of cinema, honestly, where there wasn't really anything being pushed uh, politically or anything like that. It's just good action, good characters, good story, and nothing more. And it, it, it just, you know, this movie is just very, very simple and how great it is. And that's why I think I just absolutely loved it. The F-15 action, uh, all of it, just, just extremely great. Very, very straightforward plot. Uh, nothing more needs to be said for Top Gun Maverick. At number seven is going to be the Avengers. Now, I know a lot of people really like Avengers Endgame, Avengers Infinity War, but if the Avengers, the first one, will always be one that holds a very, very special place in my heart because, obviously, it was one of the first movies of its kind to bring a group of characters together that they have been building up and building towards for a couple of years and having this huge team-up movie where they take out this big bad guy, and uh, it was just really, really great. I remember all of the talk when this movie came out, uh, all of my friends uh, getting all the different toys and talking about the different scenes in the movie. It, there was just a ton of conversation going on when this movie came out, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I said, this is a movie that will just abs absolutely hold a special place in my heart for uh, quite some time because I think I remember, honestly, just the talk about the movie afterwards a lot more than the movie itself. Whereas with Avengers Endgame, I think it was the theatrical experience itself that I really remembered. With the Avengers, I think it was the conversation. There was just so much conversation going on for a while, and uh, it was just really awesome. And I just, I love the Avengers movie. Um... It's, it's just really a really, really great team-up movie. I just kind of liked how simple Phase 1 was. We didn't really have too many uh, characters at, uh, at that time yet. And um, I think just Loki is just a really, really straightforward villain in this movie. Works well. The Jatari, obviously, is just basically action uh it's, it's just basically cannon fodder for our avengers to just take out in in new york and just cause all this destruction and stuff like that uh and uh, it, it's just really great i love it being in new york them just taking out all these aliens and stuff like that and uh yeah i, I just avengers i mean I, I don't think i really need to explain it if you've seen the movie you know why it's so great uh, but I'm just kind of explaining to you guys why maybe I put this movie on here rather than Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. However, I would say that they both of those movies would definitely be in my top 30, if not like my top 20. So, uh, yeah, uh, Avengers goes at number 7. Coming in at number 6 for me is going to be Fast 5. And I absolutely just eat this movie up every single time I see it. I think this is mo a movie that is just honestly at the peak of... Um, uh, of the, the Fast and Furious franchise where they just sort of got everything right and figured out that winning formula without feeling like they were going too over the top. Everything in this movie feels grounded while also being just super amazing and just super awesome and fun to watch. And I just love our cast in here. I think this is probably the best team or like team up of characters that they've had in the Fast and Furious franchise where it feels like we have a good amount of people in here, a good family of people, but not too much to where we're we're taking away too much time talking about this group of people and then finally going back to this other group that we're more interested in. This is just the perfect formula and uh and and um recipe for success for the Fast and Furious franchise, honestly. If you want to do a Fast and Furious movie, do it like how Fast Five does because it is just absolutely amazing. Uh you have uh, Hobbs and the FBI in this movie who are sort of like kind of a side villain in this movie from the main villain and then they end up 
teaming up with the uh, group by the ending of the movie, and it just makes for a really, really satisfying payoff at the end. Uh, and I think Dwayne Johnson is honestly like, I don't want to say at his peak because, you know, he's still an amazing actor and everything, but I really, really love him in this movie. This is one of the most favorite movies that I, I have seen Dwayne Johnson in. Uh, he's kind of toward, uh, turned towards being more of a comedic actor uh, nowadays. They've done that with a lot of, like, bigger dudes and wrestlers where they've kind of turned him into the to the uh, stupid, funny type uh, guy. But in this movie, he's just a straight-up badass, like a don't-F-with-me attitude in this movie. And I absolutely love that. And I wish that they would bring that back for Dwayne Johnson because I just love it in this movie. Uh, obviously Vin Diesel does great. Paul Walker does amazing. One of my favorite actors, if not probably my favorite actor. Uh, so yeah, Fast Five, it's just an easily consumable, just great, uh, film overall. Um, and, uh, just the best recipe, uh, for a Fast and Furious film that you can make. Coming in at number five is going to be X-Men First Class. Now I know what you're saying. If you're going to have an X-Men movie on here, why not have something like, X2, Logan, Days of Future Past, and I love all of those movies, I really like the X-Men franchise especially, like, I, I'm excited to see what they're gonna do now that they've combined with the MCU, but I didn't mind when they were separate from the MCU, and X-Men First Class was just always the one that I preferred, I don't know, it's chronologically, it's the first X-Men movie, obviously, and I just kind of like how everybody's sort of learning their characters or, or their powers, and so there's a lot of room for development in all of our different characters. They're at their very early, early stages, uh, so you get to see a lot of development in uh, Charles uh, Xavier's uh, character, uh, Mystique, and particularly Magneto, uh, Michael, uh, played by Michael Fassbender, obviously, and I think this movie really, really emphasized Michael Fassbender's acting potential. I think that he just does an amazing job in this movie. I just always really, really loved his performance in the uh, X-Men First Class, um, and uh, yeah, I just really, I really, really love X-Men First Class. I love our villain in here, played by Kevin Bacon. Uh, he's just such a uh, one of those villains that uh, is just really, really smart, uh, you know, powerful enough, but not overpowered, and just one that you really, really want to see get his comeuppance, and um, I think that the final act of this movie is uh, really, really great, uh, and ha offers a, a lot of payoff for uh, many of our characters, um, and, uh, yeah, I just, I, I love X-Men First Class. Uh, I could go on all day about all the different stuff that I love about this movie, but it's just a classic, like, how do you want to say it, where a, a guy starts up this team up, he's trying to get all these, uh, these amateurs ready, trying to train them and stuff like that, and, uh, and so there's just a lot of room for payoff at the end where everybody's sort of figures it out and, uh, you know, gets their moment, uh, in the, in the spotlight, I guess you want to say. And so, I don't know. I just, I really, really like X-Men First Class. I've always preferred it over Days of Future Past and has always just been my personal favorite X-Men film. Coming in at number four, and I know that I said that the ranking doesn't really matter here, but I'll tell you, when I was putting together this ranking, it was very hard to decide whether or not this placement or the next placement should go first. So, Honestly, it could be interchangeable, so don't really take any offense uh, to offense to whichever one you do like more, but a number four for me is going to be Iron Man, the movie that kicked off the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I think one of the reasons why I just fell in love with this movie and, uh, and uh, got into the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the first place, I think really all that could be attributed to Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal of the Tony Stark character. I think that, uh, you know, with, with, and this really goes for a lot of these franchises. And, uh, if, if I had the choice to be able to put, like, like I said, with Back to the Future, the Iron Man trilogy on here, which I really like, and I think that is underrated, uh, is underrated. I, I really like Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3 as, just as much as this one, honestly, which might be a bit of a controversial opinion. But, um, yeah, one of the reasons why I got into, uh, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and a lot of these franchises that are on here has to do with the main character's perform performance and portrayal of uh, that main character that they are doing. And so I think that a lot of, you know, why I got into the Marvel Cinematic Universe can be attributed to Tony Stark's portrayal. And I just think that he does an absolutely 
great job at just nailing that 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 his character and his personality and how he acts and all of his different traits and weaknesses and strengths i think he just all, brings it all out really great in a way where you can uh understand you could like you could almost fully understand him and predict how he's going to respond to certain people uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, he's still going to develop throughout uh, all of the MCU movies. And so, yeah, he really uh, sets that, uh, establishes that here, uh, the character of Tony Stark. And obviously the action is really, really great. Uh, the scene where he builds his first Iron Man suit and gets out, the scene where he uh, finishes up Mark III and takes out a bunch of those terrorists, super, super satisfying, uh, where he develops Mark II, and he tests it out, and he notices a slight issue with it. I love just all of that stuff um, in here. I think it's just, this was a really, really great uh, choice of character to kick off the MCU. While our villain might not be the greatest villain ever, uh, and they kind of just repeat the same, uh, like this, the same motive for a, a, like a bunch of MCU movies to come that all have to do with Tony, uh, Tony Stark. Um, I, I still, I just, I love this movie. Uh, it, it's really great. It'll always hold a special place in my heart. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I'm sure I don't really need to give, uh, too much reason. If you've seen any of, like, most of these movies on this list, I'm sure most of you could agree, uh, how great they are, and I don't really need to go into much depth. Coming in at number three is going to be Spider-Man 2, and I like, like I said, this is definitely a matter of personal preference, which one you would like more, uh, but Sam Raimi's Spider-Man was the, uh, one that I was introduced to first, and so I kind of have a slight little bias, even though, honestly, it could change on any day. Uh, if I like Iron Man or Spider-Man 2 more, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but Spider-Man 2 is just such an amazing film. I love the Sam, Raim Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. You know, Spider-Man 3 gets a lot of slack. Uh, and so that's why, def you know, a highly flawed film. That's why I didn't put that one on here. And the first Spider-Man, while I do really do like it, uh, I, I, and, you know, some people like that one even more than this one. I think that Spider-Man 2 just takes place at the perfect time in the, uh, in Spider-Man's character to where it's after the first movie, we've dealt with Green Goblin, his, uh, you know, Ben has passed away, and now we have this new villain, uh, Doc Ock, who I prefer over Green Goblin personally, and he's dealing with the grievances of, uh, you know, Ben Parker's death. And so there's just a really, a lot of emotional scenes in here. He loses his powers at one point in the film. And so we see, you know, we see the town sort of like, you know, you know what, what the city's like without Spider-Man and all this stuff that, you know, they're dealing with. And we see sort of, for a while, he's sort of indifferent to the town being without him. And then he starts to realize, like, the town needs me. Like, they need me back, and I, I can't do without being Spider-Man any longer. And so he starts to get that motivation back, and he's able to come back as Spider-Man and take out Doc Ock. And I think it's just really, really great. Uh, he loses his girlfriend uh, for, for a while in this movie as well. So there's just really a lot of emotion, a lot of loss in this movie, even though we don't lose, you know, you know, Ben Parker in this movie. It feels like we really lose a lot in this movie, and it feels just as emotional as that uh, first Spider-Man movie. So I really love Spider-Man 2. Uh, it, it, it's just really, really great. A lot of great Spider-Man action that still holds up even after what, this movie's like 20 years old now, uh, but it, the action still holds up. That train sequence with Doc Ock still looks really, really great. Uh, and so, yeah, Spider-Man 2 will always hold a very special place in my heart. Thing at number two for me is going to be Too Fast, Too Furious. That's right, there are two Fast and Furious movies on here, and even though Fast Five is probably the one that I like more, and I think is a much more enjoyable and uh, greater film, too Fast, Too Furious is always the one that I preferred, mainly just because I love the dynamic between our two main leads, Paul Walker and Tyrese Gibson. I think that they just work really, really well on screen together and just fuel the just craziness and just chaos of this movie. Uh, some of the side missions that they go on in here, I think it's just a lot of fun, really, really great. Uh, I, just the best word to describe this movie is just 
fun. Uh, and uh, I think that there's also a lot of payoff in this film. You really, really, uh, you know, begin to get a distaste for the villain throughout the movie. And so I think it just pays off really well off the at the end when you have the car drive off the or drive off the ramp and land on the boat in uh, while it's uh, uh, going down the river. Just like to see something like that this early on in the Fast and Furious franchise was just really, really awesome. Uh, and uh, yeah, obviously the Fast and Furious franchise has come a long ways. And so that doesn't sound too crazy when you got cars going up into space in the, in the ninth film. But uh, I think it's still just really, really awesome to see. Uh, and uh, like I, kind of like what I said with Fast Five, an over-the-top movie, but it's still very grounded and a lot more believable than the later sequels, and you still have a lot of fun with it. It's still ridiculous. It's still got that wow factor, but it's not like so insane that you're like, this is a little bit too much for me. And so Too Fast, Too Furious, like I said, I just love the dynamic uh, of our two main leads here. Ludacris is obvious in, in here as well as sort of a, a third uh third side character uh and uh, i i think he, he's fun as well you got eva mendez uh you got a f few other characters thrown in here and uh yeah this movie is just a lot of fun uh really really great uh i i've I, like most of these movies that on on this list i've already talked about i've done fast and Fur fast and the furious rankings in the past so you guys know why i love this movie so much and so it goes at number two. Without a doubt, my number one favorite movie of all time, which unlike many of the other movies on this list, is not a sequel. It's not been a part of any ranking that I've done in the past. It's a standalone movie that I believe I did a review for some years back, back when I did older uh, uh, reviews for older um, uh, releases. And so my favorite movie of all time is Real Steel. That's right, the Rock'em Sock'em box, uh, robot boxing movie from 2011 starring... Hugh Jackman, Evangeline Lilly, Dakota Gallo, uh, and uh, directed by Sean Levy, who, one of the reasons why I really enjoyed Free Guy, uh, I liked Cheaper by the Dozen, which I also did a review for back when I did uh, older reviews for older uh, releases, and he's also directed the upcoming movie uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, which is one of the reasons why I'm super excited for that, so I really like Sean Levy as a director, and uh, Real Steel is absolutely my childhood favorite. It is definitionally a feel-good movie, and I think a lot more people have started to appreciate the movie for that reason over the years. I feel like when the movie first came out, uh, it was like very, very highly criticized for not really being um, uh, like anything like super special or anything that we haven't seen before. It's not, I will admit, strong in any particular genre that it is involved with particularly boxing obviously you have movies like rocky uh and cinderella man that i really like that are much better boxing films but i think that real steel is just a well-rounded film in general that anybody can watch and have fun with enjoy um get maybe a little bit of emotional impact behind and just really really like and have a good time with and afterwards feel really uplifted and that's how i feel about this movie the final act is one of my favorite final acts of any movie for that reason provides a lot of emotional payoff for a main character of Hugh Jackman who gets sort of a redemptive arc in this movie that I really really like um and I think even talking about like the uh, uh fight scenes in this movie themselves I think that the fight choreography is actually pretty impressive um and still holds up even after a decade uh they do a really nice job of combining the visual effects with the practical effects of the robots that they actually built and put together for this movie. I think it's all really, really cool if you've ever seen the behind-the-scenes stuff for it. Uh, and, yeah, just Real Steel, uh, if you've ever watched it, you know, like, um, you know, for some people, maybe it's a bit of a guilty pleasure. For me, it absolutely isn't. I love this movie, uh, and uh, I, I think more people have come to appreciate it, uh, but I've never understood why some people uh, like to knock on this film so much. I really, really like it and appreciate it. And we'll never feel any shame for watching the movie. I remember when I was a kid, when I was uh, very, very little, and or when I was little, and this movie first came out. I remember playing the mobile games for uh, uh, for it, which were very, very popular, uh, and also getting the action figures uh, uh, for the movie, uh, which of course I unboxed. And uh, since then, I've gotten boxed versions of the action figures, which. If you're like a big collector, they're surprisingly go for a lot on eBay. So uh, if you're ever looking to collect something uh, and, you know, 
maybe resell it down the road real steel action figures go for a lot on ebay surprisingly but yeah i got some up on the wall over there and so yeah i just really really love real steel and i'm really glad that more people have begun to uh appreciate this what i think is a really really highly underrated film uh more and more over the years uh and so yeah real steel will always hold a extremely special place in my heart and uh, you guys might be surprised that it's actually my favorite movie of all time. So what you guys thought in the comment section down below, were there any huge surprises on, on here? Any movies that you were surprised didn't show up on this list that did show up on this list? Were you surprised that uh, I had two Fast and Furious movies on here, three films from 2011 on this list, uh, no horror movies on this list either, um, and two Spider-Man films? Like, what, what really, really surprised you? There was a lot of... Uh, repeats, I guess you want to say on this list that may have surprised you, but yeah, no horror movies. I think that might be the biggest surprise for a lot of you guys. Uh, a lot of horror movies that I think uh, came close, but it's really, really hard to uh, compete with action films in terms of enjoyment, and that's definitely how I usually come up with my favorites lists is based off of my enjoyment and rewatchability of the film, and I really like these types of rankings a lot better. Uh, and I hope to do maybe uh, some more in the future, like favorite horror movies of all time, favorite uh, adventure films, action films, whatever it may be. Let me know what you guys want to see in the future. Uh, I like these a lot better because everybody's going to have a different list based on how old they are, based on how they grew up, what types of movies they prefer. And uh, so, yeah, I really like these over just, you know, ranking what people think are like the greatest movies of all time or whatnot. Uh, I think that this th there's a lot more subjectivity and variety that and nuance that can be allowed in these types of lists. And so I think that they're a lot more fun for that reason. So, yeah, let me know of any surprises that you guys found in here. Uh, let me know what you guys want to see next. And uh, what else was I going to say? Um, uh, let me know your list of what are your favorite movies of all time. I really, really want to know. So let me know in the comment section down below. And stay tuned. We got a lot of reviews coming up in April, of course. And I'm going to have two other videos coming out right after this. So make sure you go check them out. And I think that's pretty much all I got. Like and subscribe, guys. And I will see you next time. <laughs>